Okay, here we are, live. Now I'm doing it. Hello, Floormore. And that. Uh, you know, I know you've been looking forward to this game as much as I have. Is a mic working anyway, or should be? I, uh, I'm going to go into the settings. Let's see. Probably have to turn down the desktop audio a little bit. <clears throat> I have actually turned off the music because, well, you know, subtitles, yes. Yes. Let's have a look at the video. Uh, yeah. Turned off the motion blur. Everything is set. Uh, Turn it down a bit. That should be good. Okay, dear content creators, as you'll discover, this game is full of intrigue and plot twists. Please give your audience a spoiler warning before sharing content from beyond the white hallway so that interested players can fully enjoy the experience for themselves if they wish to. Yes, indeed, I will. So beyond the white hallway, it's major spoiler alert. But I shall be playing through this, all of it. And um, you know my background in... Not background exactly, but you know, my fascination with and for all of the Roman period. There may be some areas where it will be in Latin, but should be able to translate a bit. Right, let's start. It was developed a core team of three people over four years. Wow. This is a mystery with multiple advent uh, multiple endings. Rewards thoughtful conversation and exploration. Didn't get to read all that, but okay. Present day. Hey! You're alive! When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, a phone, maybe. I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So, want to tell me who you are? Okay. Oh, I love it. You can tell the uh, male or female. And the hands change accordingly. Okay, well, stick with male. Oh, by like that. Stick with the defaults, I guess. Uh, Stick with Wolfie. Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? <laughs> I was searching for ruins. That would make you an archaeologist. I bet you if it's an archaeologist, then it would uh, help translate the, the Latin. Covert mission soldier, you have a military issued firearm but only 10 bullets. You have to use them judiciously since there's no way to get more. Okay. And run from the law. I'm a fugitive. 
25% fast ones. Now, amnesiac. Recent head trauma has increased your pain threshold, making you 50% harder to take down. So, to go for the... I think, I think like, logically, it would be either a soldier... Or maybe an amnesiac, because, you know, floating down the river and bang your head, so... I guess there will be a lot of running. You get in trouble. Stuff like that. If I remember right, I didn't get very far with the original Skyrim mod with this, but... Um, Oh, that's a nice effect. It also, I guess it would be a dragonfly in the background. But anyway, it didn't get very far with this when I played it on the Skyrim, as a Skyrim mod. Um, because Skyrim being Skyrim and plugins being plugins, they, they all crashed, so I gave up on it. But... I think... Ultimately, for logical purposes, we'll just have the amnesiac. It does look like you took a pretty hard blow to the head. You're just lucky you've been given a second chance. Which is why I feel terrible for what I'm about to say, but I have a favor to ask. There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him, so I'm just kind of stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is, I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him. If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Anna, mind if I ask some questions first? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy. I just... What do you want to know? Okay, so let's just start from there. Um, what's your story? Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Not even gonna tell me your name, huh? Oh, uh, I'd rather not see if it's all the same to you. Hmm. Never mind. I don't care that much. Quite dismissive. Just pleading. I'm, I'm not gonna be pleading. Oh, uh, look. I'd I'd really like to know, especially if I'm gonna be helping you. It's it a tate, I guess. All right, fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I can see why, but... Um, <laughs> this particular response that I just noticed, all those Karen memes must have really new ruined that name, huh? Um, Ina and I were on about just this topic yesterday, and we were having such a laugh, but I just, I'll be nice. Thank you for saving my life, Karen. Because not all Karens are, well, like that. Uh, you're welcome. Always happy to help. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Okay, so who is Al? He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. Okay, where exactly are we? You really don't remember? No, I lost my memory. We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Okay. What about the ruin? Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. And... 
It's a stupid question in the middle of nowhere. But have you tried calling for help? What am I, an idiot? You can hike a long, long way in any direction and never find another soul. Trust me. Okay, thank you. Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? <laughs> oh god. It'll be a typical um, archaeologist response. Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'll keep an eye out for him, but he's secondary because I'm in it for the artifacts there. I'll pass. I don't know. Alright, I'm in. Thank you. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Please, hurry. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I would. Okay. WAS to move. Oh, okay. That's cool. Probably quite linear, can't really go anywhere else, but um That's nice. Rusted metal torch must have been used by it now. Seems to be going the right way. Nice. Of course, you can sprint. And then the knives. Old gnarly trees. Wow. This doesn't, it's not quite underground yet. All right, backpack. A backpack full of worn hiking boots and empty food packets. Nothing valuable here, but still, it seems strange that Al left it behind. Okay. Let's read the note. If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, you who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? The people have survived down there, against the odds. Seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in now, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation. Well, fair enough. Okay, so let's have a look. On there. Whoa! Whoa! Uh huh. So here's the entrance. See what's on the other side. There's nothing, doesn't seem to be anything here. Nothing you can interact with, okay. scroll can't translate it yet well let me see uh meminisi semper vigilante uh, semper vigilante that would probably be something like um 
I bet you should have uh, should have chosen the archaeologist because we would be able to translate it. But this probably means something like uh, remember, always be vigilant. I guess. And the way is paved with gold. All of these statues, if they've turned to gold, how did they get there? Did somebody actually put them up there? A young Roman woman in a pose of lamentation. Tesni me or dire. Um, Probably something like, Can you hear me? Wow. Roman gladiator mid stride. What could make a gladiator flee? Yeah, because they are kind of like, you know, meant to be the uh, fearless, fearless warriors. Wow. Me or Yuva? Yuva. I don't know what that is. Um, Aduva, Ire. Oh, help me. Right. My Roman woman looks like she's begging for her life. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. Quick save, yes, we'll do a quick save. Roman military commander attempting to scramble away from something. Or well, whatever it is, it must have been like really harsh. We're actually underground. This is huge, huge cavern. State of terror. Yeah, we're a lot. Whoops. I don't think we need the torch. Is this well lit already? Wow. That is huge. And a long way down. Vigilabats. Beware. A Roman woman who appears to be praying for help that never came. So... Going up. That's a good question, but as you will see, um, oh, as you will see, um, when we get down, I do know that, you know, from playing the Skyrim mod, that the city is inhabited. It's not like completely abandoned or, you know, anybody's turned to gold. But, um, presumably it would be some of the inhabitants that go and keep the torches and the fires alight. It's a golden statue of a man wearing modern clothes. This must be Al, but how is that possible? So it says read the note. Whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, she'll suffer the same fate I did. She spends a lifetime in this place. 
Basically, like a time loop thing. I mean, I I do remember. It's it's funny because it's been such a long time since I played the Skyrim mod itself. So it's just sort of all coming back to me. But I, as I said, I didn't get very far. A young Roman woman in a state of panic. Uh, I have no idea what that means. Something to repair? Maybe in the, um... In my next playthrough, like off, off screen, off, um, live stream, I will... Help me to you help us repair or something like that. Um, me, this new me order. Will you help me? Yeah, or I might actually play as a um, archaeologist, so I can actually understand what this is. Roman man on his knees as if begging the gods for mercy. Fair enough. Yeah, help me. This must be the portal. Whoa, and so it begins. Tap P to enter photo mode. Oh, okay. Well, let's have a look at photo mode. Oh, yes. Okay, that would be... That would be a perfect screenshot. Switch visual style. Oh! Movie grain, black and white. Wow. That's not bad for um concept art, I guess, or like something. So let's have a look. Which one? This retro black, colored cartoon, mosaic. Game child. It says hellish. <laughs> that would be more appropriate. Uh, Las Vegas cinematic. Met the metrics. Nice sepia. Embossed. Papyrus. No, I don't think that. That's a little bit too bright. So we'll just stick with the default. I think probably here. Okay. The relief depicting a great circular portal and two women. Wonder who they could be. 
<clears throat> yeah, the note said that they were, it was a mistake, but, you know, don't really, okay. Uh, salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Don't really Can have a choice. Tell me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? You don't have a choice but to come here because, um... Well, there'd be no game otherwise if you sort of, like, decided, oh, no, I'm not going to enter the portal, or presumably if you said to, um, Aaron, oh, I'm not going to help, then there'd be no game, so, you yeah. know. I might as well tell the truth. I'm Wolfie, and I just come from the future. Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait, are you a bit, <laughs> you know, you're right in the head? That's all right, friend. <laughs> Everyone's welcome here. <laughs> uh, seriously, what's today's date? We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? What year? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? Uh... <laughs> they wouldn't know what BC is. Uh, but... Is this before or after Christ? Hey, not so loud! Just saying that name could land you in trouble here. Oh... If you haven't heard, his cultists burned down half of Rome last year. Horrible business. I heard Nero executed some of them, but a lot of people are still angry with them. Even down here. So, if you're one of them, keep it to yourself. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you, you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So, let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Fair enough. Be your law, laws? Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule, and the punishment for breaking it's, well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him, so I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? All right, lead the way. When I first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, Follow we've got a guide. nice little community now. Okay. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. Oh dear, how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking him to see the magistrate. That pompous old bore won't be magistrate for much longer. <laughs> Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Wow. Not very popular. Uh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... Uh, it's not my place to say. <laughs> A loose Down woman? Right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat. Huh. That one usually gets in trouble. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind, Livia. She means well. She's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Hey, wait a minute. Did I step on... I stepped on the fire and got hurt. That's a nice effect. All right, Up no here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live. So, don't expect a warm welcome. Wow. You're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the pillars. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the magistrate. Well, he's asking me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Oh, now. You better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. 
Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you far, boy. <laughs> okay. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. Okay, what's... What's this about? I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Rule. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. Alright, lead the way. The only thing you really need to understand right now is the Golden Rule. Let me see if I can explain it this way. Okay, buddy, no problem. If there was a mutiny brewing in one combo, the legate in charge but didn't waste time finding the bad apples among hundreds. They just divided us into groups of ten, made us draw straws, and whoever drew the short straw had to be executed by the other nine. We didn't matter whether they had done anything wrong. One of us in ten would die for the crimes of the collective. We call it decimation. That seems like rough justice to you. You're a rude shock. Because the Golden Rule is exactly ten times worse. The Magistrate can explain the rest. He's up these stairs. Okay, yeah. That... Oh, don't mind me. I just live here. Hello, who are you? Fair enough. I'm going to speak to the Magistrate first before actually going anywhere. But um, that was absolutely correct. Des Decimus mean or decima means ten. So that's uh, correct. Hello. We're finally in love. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? I'm Wolfie. A curious name. Too much a curious accent. But I digress. Now, you're probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains, many hundreds of years ago. It's beautiful. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? It really doesn't exist. You could say yes, but then you'd be lying. Can't say I have. Nor could I, until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, Left inscriptions warning the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We don't call it the golden rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have. And each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please. Ask away. Well, yeah, it's a golden rule. I mean, this is kind of like people are living in fear that they don't commit any kind of crimes. And um, it would be quite interesting. 
if you live in a society like that. So what counts as sin here? An intelligent question. There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass, trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide? As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper as Rome has for centuries. Well, it makes sense to me, but we can say, okay, I'll just, it sort of makes sense to me. I'm glad you agree. The key things to remember are that we have laws forbidding treason and blasphemy. Murder, assault, and rape, as well as theft and arson, and so on. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were. Okay. So, what did you mean when you said that Proserpina sent me? You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time. Uh, you're right. I'm actually from 2,000 years into the future. 2,000 years? That is unfathomable. Please tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I might as well, I might as well tell him the truth. You'd all been turned to golden statues. have imagined it, our downfall a thousand times, but it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. So how does this ritual work? All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer. And of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future. I did see human remains in the temple, so one would presume that you can't make assumptions. I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? I'll do my best, but I can't promise anything. I'll just do my best. Well, I suppose that's all I can ask. Welcome back again. 
Why can't you investigate yourself? Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though. Unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Fair enough. So, who are your suspects? Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What I wanted here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Fair enough. How do I know you're not the person responsible? I mean, anybody could trigger something, even unwittingly, bring down the door. Okay, but so, come on, tell me what you really think. Well, there are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I knew. Mm. Yeah, that's true. You gotta sort of like, if it's gonna be the rule, everyone is a suspect, guilty until proven. Otherwise, why can we understand each other? I mean, Roman Empire, they speak Latin, right? I don't understand Latin, because I'm not an archaeologist. You mean you couldn't speak Latin before you arrived here? No. How strange. But the gods are active here, and their temples and shrines hum with power like nowhere else in the Empire. Perhaps when Proserpina brought you here, she planted the seed of Latin in your mind, so that you could better serve her. Perhaps. An unbeliever, then. If you come up with a better explanation, I'll be interested to hear it. Well, I have none, but I'm kind of like... <clears throat> Not skeptical, more like sort of like a skeptical open... Mind? If I do this, will you help me get back to my own time? If I understand Persephone's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the golden rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. Thus, you have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Makes sense? Ah, uh, it never... When you're dealing with time travel and paradoxes, it never really makes sense, does it? But I kind of get it, because, you know, I, I have dabbled in all of the quantum stuff, so... For me, it, it would make a bit of sense. So, that's it. Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? You can be an a-hole and say, oh, you don't have much choice, but... Yeah, he's piqued my curiosity now, so I'm in. I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them, if it will win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless of course you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Alright, let's get started. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. 
I only heard wailing from there not long ago. It seems like something was not right. Okay, I'll get right on it. And at this juncture, we are going to save. But, I'm also going to be um, right back. Time to get more coffee. Uh, did you catch me up on the sin? I had to leave the crucial moment. Yeah, no problem. Or, or you can just sort of, um, you can watch this a bit later, Floormore. Um, it'll, it'll be there and this will be a series because I'm not going to live stream this more than an hour and a half anyway. Uh, it'll be in its own play playlist, but thank you for popping in. You know, 
see you um, a bit later. I mean, we all got to do what we all got to do, so yeah, no problem. Meantime, I'm going to resume this. Now, I must admit that the scenes, the scenarios here, they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, and the voice acting is pretty cool as well. Is that them? Okay, so let's get going. So, what's in here? Time to start exploring. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna search anything, and I'm not gonna steal anything. At least not intentionally. Note from Centilla. Centilla to Centius. May Jupiter Optimus Maximus continue to provide and guide you. Thank you for making me your daughter and for the lovely birthday pendant. I promise uh, I will wear it always. I feel so safe and fortunate to have you as my father and Sentia as my sister. I sense you've been feeling apprehensive about the election next month. But if you can just show them the strong and dependable man I know you to be, you will be re-elected. I'm sure of it. That's nice and encouraging. A lot of the, a lot of the things in that, like the Roman, was they didn't just sort of, you know, that they would adopt children. If you like, it was quite common for them to have like their own children, but also adopt children for a sort of extended family. Oh, okay. She she's up from her chaise long. Hello. Oh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? What's your story? I'm Sentia, eldest daughter of the magistrate. But you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced properly. What are you doing in here? And why are you dressed like that? What a snob. I oh, can say, yeah, charming. But I'm not from around here. Really? I'd never have noticed what with your flawless <laughs> accent, appropriate attire, and impressive mastery of our customs. <laughs> now, remind me, why are we having this conversation? Oh dear. Yeah, sarcasm at its best. It's like she's a little bit... a little bit cast I didn't notice that. Okay, do you know a way out of here? Ugh, what is it with you people? You've heard the rumour that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumour. We have no idea what happened to Sentinel. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. Can I help? I don't know. Can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? When did you last see her? It was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. She was seeing someone? I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret, even from me. Huh. So why, why would she keep that secret from sisters? I think that she would tell sisters everything. They were obviously sort of, I mean, from, from the initial thing, they were kind of quite close, I guess. Because our father had plans to marry her off, ah. eventually. And even a rumour about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. Ah, uh, yeah. See, so father didn't mention any of this when I spoke to him. 
Why? That doesn't surprise me. To him, it was like a prized cow wandering off from its paddock. He's upset, of course, but he says he's too busy with the election to help look for her. So he's letting Horatius do the heavy lifting. Some good that's done. Is it possible that her lover was involved somehow? Like uh, perhaps a kidnapping or maybe they went off for some secret tryst? What is the word? Eloped? I don't know, but it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. Could be a jealous lover, like, you know, hey, you belong to me kind of thing, and uh, I'm not going to let your father marry you off to someone else. Well, what do you think could be? So, Sentius, Sentia, Sentilla. Why are all your names so familiar? Well, I know the answer to this, and she's going to confirm it. You really aren't from here, are you? All Roman women are named after their fathers. I think it's their way of branding us. Like cattle to be sold at market. His family name is Sentius, so I'm Sentia because I'm the eldest. And my little sister is formerly Sentia Minor, but she is affectionately known as Sentina. Uh, I really don't want to ask this, but for the purposes I should. You look surprisingly relaxed about your sister's disappearance. I mean, she's obviously keeping up a false facade, because deep down you can actually tell that she's really upset about it. I hope you're not insinuating I'm somehow pleased with her disappearance. No. Um, I will not be able to... I don't think I will be able to do bluff at this point. But it is just an observation. If you must know, I'm here because my father has forbidden me from leaving the villa. I couldn't bear to lose you too, he says. As if he loves me, and not because he needs at least one daughter he can trade off. Yeah, these these arranged marriages, they were quite common and, um, you know, it was all about wealth and power. And, you know, I can't say that I'm entirely in favour of that because you should really marry whom you love but for the certain classist system um, it would probably work and that's it so you'll help me find her all right i'll do it <laughs> thank you you should probably take a look through her room it's the one just by the front door Maybe you'll find something the rest of us missed. I'll get right on it. Thank you. I would presume if you fail the bluff, she wouldn't speak to you anymore, so... Let's see. Are there any other notes? Them in the bust. A sculpture of Ares, the Greek god of war, known to the Romans as Mars. Yeah. I don't know about that. A small vial containing a rudimentary perfume made from flowers and oil. They were quite common in the Romany times. They would actually uh, mix oils and crushed flowers. And then they would mix them up. Too bad nowadays we couldn't do the same sort of thing because um, you know, these perfumes, they have too many chemicals in them and harmful substances. So, cosmetic jar, a brass jar containing some sort of powder for makeup. Not entirely sure what they were made of, but... Brass mirror. It was quite common to have brass mirrors. Sometimes it would be uh, silver. 
polished into a rudimentary mirror. Used to make up, used to apply the makeup. And that's it. We'll read her journal, will be nosy. Dear diary, today my father suggested I write a diary as a way of keeping myself occupied while we deal with the sudden and devastating disappearance of my sister. As a dutiful daughter, of course, I shall oblige. The following pages contain my innermost secrets. Ooh, should I or should I not read it? And again, it might be evidence. I know you're reading this, father. I may be young, but do not think me stupid. We're all entitled to our secrets, Sentia. <laughs> so her innermost secret? She knows father reads her diary. No, not going to steal anything. I'm not even going to search for it. So this is Sentia's room. Uh, okay. The vile brass. Uh, examine the ink jar. The ink appears to be made from soot and water. Common practice before the um, discovery of modern ink, they used to just use soot and water, but they also used to use other. Pigments or other colors as, as well, other powders for different colors. And once again, we have the perfume in the mirror. Very overlooking here. Maybe something, maybe nothing. I'm going to save. No. Nope. Okay, figure out what happened to Centilia. Search. I don't think there's really anything in here that they have overlooked. Well, maybe. Note from Centilla. Centilla to Sentius and Sentia. May Clementia give you strength to forgive me. I am sorry to have to leave you this way, but I have found a way to escape and I must take it. I hope we meet again someday. Ah! So there was some clue. She, um... She's evidently... handsome way. On your best behavior, I trust? No, never. I never behave. Sentia? What have you discovered? I found a letter in her room which mentioned her plan to escape. What? Really? I swear, I searched her room top to bottom and never saw that. I wonder how I could have missed it. Strange, but well done, I suppose. But it's odd. It was only a few months ago that Centilla's friend Yulia let slip she was planning an escape of her own. And yet, Yulia's still here. You should go and speak with her. Find out if she knows anything. She lives in the villa next door. So I've got, I've got her approval, at least. Um, and you know, it's funny because when you search a particular room and you hide something underneath the pillows, I mean, I... Keep an eye out for Centilla, would you? Yeah, sure. You know, you you um overlook looking underneath the pillows. It's just one of those things where it's like um the most obvious place isn't always the place that you would look, if you know what I mean. So now I'm curious. We'll go to the forum. It's got a lot of quests. I'm curious about the old lady.
Oh, I can't translate it. Don't steal anyone. Don't hurt anyone. Don't. A quid here. You're on here. No, no, cheer, no. Yeah. Don't steal anything. Don't hurt anyone. Don't. Whoever wrote this didn't get a chance to finish it. Evidently. So at this point, even if it weren't, um, Okay, so where is she? She's, um... She's guarding the door. So I presume that Proserpina allows you to translate regardless. This must be the, uh, this is the auditorium. Used to have these for public speaking. Read the note. Sipia VC Cohere Invisible Mercy. Okay. The Myth of the Golden Rule by Duratus the Younger. As per our custom, I shall begin by paying my respects to the god responsible for this city, for our continued prosperity and tranquil seclusion, he deserves our admiration. But here I must depart from custom, for his attempt at imposing strict rule upon us is oppressive and overreaching, and deserving of our contempt. Ah. So that could be classed as a sin. You're basically going against the gods and the golden rule. They wander around. What's she looking at? Then? They're both looking at one another. Okay, so we figure out who Garum, a fermented fish sauce used as content. It gives off a faint salty aroma. It's from Scari X of. Yeah, yeah, no idea what that is. Gar Garum, yeah. You know, if there was, if there was actually one time period, I would have loved who live, it would definitely be the Romans. Because even from an early age, I was fascinated by everything Roman. And, um... You know, I wrote a lot of the short stories, I created games that were unpublished. Times were hard, yeah. And they were sort of very, um... very hard but it was a time period that I think I would have definitely liked to live in the Romans are attributed with a lot of technology oh the jails of course it's going to be locked wood carving big choice That's obviously fish. Wood carving with a symbol of fish looked like it would be religious in nature. Yeah. Partially eaten loaf of bread. It's still fresh. Whoever owns it probably hasn't finished with it. I think we're straying a little bit too far from the main quest, but damn. It's fun to explore. I can't move. I was obviously caught in mid-flight. She was running away from something. Caught in bed. 
sleep. So there's going to be no, it doesn't seem, I don't want to risk it, but probably no one owns this now, so I'm not going to do anything yet, but it's good to know that you can come down here and probably grab a lot of the stuff. Wow, they are certainly towering in fear. Creeper vines might be climbable if only they could support my weight. Oh, um, okay. So there's going to be a way that you can turn things into gold, perhaps. Translate the graph, graffiti, errant ex sanguis scenic purporti can't quite read that. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Yeah, errant is wander. Ex sanguinicini is blood or bloodless. Uh, corporate would be shadows. I literally can't read the rest. Note from Olivia. The place is called the cursed. Here, Titius offers up his innards to be torn, stretched out over nine fields. You, Tantalus, Tantalus, the god of uh, the underworld, uh, or the god of, yeah, something, cannot catch the drops of water, and the tree you grasp at eludes you. You, Sisyphus, attack or pursue the stone that always returns. Ixion turns and follows after himself and flees, and the forty-nine, the ladies, who dared to plot the destruction of their cousins, their husbands, fetch again with incessant labour the water they have lost. <coughs> well, that seems to be kind of prophetic, in a sense. Ah, uh, we're... Let's, let's leave. I'm not... Before actually... Getting more distracted... Might as well uh, do this. Okay, fi figure out what happened to Sensua. And the dying grasp. I know what's distressing Lucretia. So which ones that we shall do? Probably track this one. Salve Dooley. How are you doing today? I'm sad. Am I going to die? I don't think so, my friend. It's election day today. Perhaps our new magistrate will be kinder than Sentius and let you out. I hope so. Hilarious. What happens when you die? You're not going to die any time soon, do we? My mother told me. When you die, a fairy man helps you cross a river and your spirit lives on in the underworld. Is that true? Well, yes, but is it true that if you were good, you get to go to Elysium, but if you were bad, you get punished forever and ever in Tartarus? Something like that, but... If I die, I go to Tartarus, because they say I've been bad. I'm not going to let that happen to you, do we? I promise. Thank you, Galen. Thank you. No. I have more work to do, but I'll visit you again soon, alright? Alright, Galerius. 
feared. Oh, uh, Galerius is a really kind soul, really. Hi. Again. Ah, it's you again. Hope you're settling in, friend. Now, what's on your mind? Okay, so, I mean, it, this is sort of like, this gives an insight into what the Romans actually believed. And it's quite fascinating to me because, you know, the Tartarus was like the bad place, equivalent to hell, I guess. And the Elysium, or the Elysian fields were the equivalent of hell. I mean, heaven. So, what's your story, dude? Well, it's a long one and kind of sad, but I don't mind telling it. Sure. I'm a farmer. Always have been. I grew up in a small village in Britannia, Camulodunum, with my parents and two little sisters. Lovely part of the world. One day, when I was about twenty, my father and I were in the top paddock, loading our cart, when some Roman legionaries came along, demanding produce for their men. My father told me to run into the house for his axe, and so I did. I sprinted so fast I almost threw up, but by the time I got back, he was bleeding out on the ground, and my cart was empty. That was my first encounter with the legions. My mother died of a broken heart soon after, and things went downhill from there. I took over the farmstead, but I was young. It was a struggle. More raiding started before too long. We'd come outside in the morning to find animals missing, our stores pillaged. These legion thugs just took whatever they wanted. One night, when my sisters and I had nothing left to steal, there was a knock at the door. I knew who they were, and what they wanted. I got my father's old axe, pulled the door open real quick, and before that soldier knew it, split his face right down the middle. But there were more of them. I never saw how many, because the next thing I knew, I was waking up with a mouth full of dirt and lungs full of smoke. My home was reduced to ash. My sister's dead. Sorry to hear that. And they left me alive to see what they'd done. Still burns whenever I think about it. Yeah, that is uh, often the way the Roman legionaries, they were absolute beasts. You know, it's... Uh... It's the only thing about the Romans is sort of like reminds me of when they go to places and when they in their attempt to conquer, especially in Britain, they would come and they fought. They, you know they were unmatched as soldiers, unequaled, well organized, but they were often very harsh. I'm sorry. Yeah. To well, hear that. I wasn't the only one this happened to. It wasn't long before Boudicca led thousands of Britons in a rebellion against the Romans. Unfortunately, there were just too many of them. And those of us who survived, they enslaved. So, then I found myself being transported all the way to Rome to be sold to the highest bidder. I spent a few years working for my new master, learning the Romans' ways. I romanized my name and everything. I tried to escape a couple of times. But they always found me, and I'd just end up right back where I was. I'd probably still be there, too, if it wasn't for the stampedes breaking out. You see, about seven months ago, an enormous fire broke out in Rome. Everybody was running down toward the river, screaming and shouting. I'd never seen anything like it. Human beings acting like cattle. I got swept up with them somehow, and the rest is a blur. The next thing I knew, some stranger was dragging me out of a river. Stumbled across this place and started my life over again. Uh, I guess I'm I'm glad things worked out in the end because it's um, um it could have been so so much worse. That's what I thought too for a while, but it seems the gods aren't done tormenting me yet. See, I finally had my own farm again, safe from the grasping hands of the Romans, or so I thought. Until Sentius the Decurion demanded I hand over all my produce. It's for the good of us all, he says. Only he takes the best bits for himself, of course. 
He even told me if I refuse his demands, I'll break the golden rule. I'm not sure I believe him, but then, what if he's right? So, it turns out our dear old magistrate is now better than the Legion thugs who took everything from me. I'm right back where I began. But don't you worry, Nemesis is waiting. And he'll get his, one day. He'll get his. Uh, forget I said that last part, will you? I get carried away sometimes. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Thanks, friend. I knew I liked you. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. Was there something else you wanted to talk about? Well, do you know of a way out of here? Well, as much as I'd love to get out of here, the harvest's always more fruitful in another man's field, isn't it? But mm. Scintilla, Sentius' daughter, went missing a few weeks back. Could be she found a way out. If anyone knows for sure, it'll be her sister, Sentia. But she'd never tell the likes of me. Well, we've already established that. Alve. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Oh, I don't give it much thought these days. I mean, everybody here has got their own view about what we need to do to survive. But I say, let's spend less time arguing about what it means to be good and just get on with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad that couldn't be applied today. <coughs> you know, everybody just needs to get along, put aside their differences, find some kind of common ground, but that won't happen. So what do you think about the election? Uh, I can't see how I could vote for either candidate. I don't like Sentius much, but Maliolus is almost as bad. Even I could do a better job. Me, a farmer. And I've never given a speech or put on a toga in my life. <laughs> All right, that's enough. All right, see you around. So we have two people who basically have a motive. Do this note. I did not do it. I'm going to speak to him regardless. I'm going to speak to you. Hello? 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 What's your story? My name's Lulu. I live here now because I got in trouble and then they said they had to lock me up. What did you do? I don't know. I don't remember things so good. I think it's just because I was looking for treasure. Did somebody think you were going to steal? Yes. Oh, I wasn't. I was just looking. Ah. You can look for treasure, but the temptation will be too high. And therefore, is that all? They said I did it. More than one. But I can't remember. Maybe they called me mean, eh? They called... They called me a liar, Billy. Liability. A liability? Yes. They said I have to live here now. They gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you... Do you think you could read it for me? Yeah, he does seem a bit slow, but I can um, definitely read it. Magist Magistrate Sentius to Dulius. I'm writing to you in relation to your incorrigible antisocial behaviour arising from your obsession with an alleged lost treasure. While I am sympathetic to your plight and the pleasing of your guardian Hannibal some weeks of the passing of your guardian Hannibal some weeks ago, I wish to impress upon you an important message. The treasure you seek does not exist. Given your memory limitations, it seems likely you simply misremembered. More importantly, since you have on several occasions been caught trespassing, including around the cisterns, which are strictly off limits to all citizens, I have reluctantly come to the conclusion that you were a liability in this community and must have your freedom limited, lest you break the golden rule. It is my hope that this letter will assist you to remember why you are incarcerated, should you experience further lapses in memory.
Okay. Look at it, sir. It says you were caught trespassing several times and they locked you up to stop you breaking the golden rule, basically. Uh, what treasure? What treasure? My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said to me always would. But then, he died. It was very sad. He said, if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something. Very precious hidden away. He gave me the key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the systems. But when I went up to the high road, they put me in here. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius and Ek. It, the priestess lady. She's a nice lady. Wow, I, I, you know, I gotta feel, gotta feel something for him because you know he's obviously very, um, for one of a better word, slow, and um. It's uh, one of those situations where, you know, d does something and doesn't remember. I do feel sorry for him. So, let me see. If you give me the key, I can find out what it unlocks. Maybe because I have, you know, I have the full run of the place. Hannibal said I shouldn't give it to anyone I didn't trust. But maybe you could help me get out of here. Then I would trust you. Look. Oh. So you could side with the magistrate and say, yeah, well, you were obviously put here in a re for a reason, trespassing, but. Me being the kind person that I am, I will talk to him. Galerius already tried that. He said the magistrate wouldn't listen, no matter what. Oh, for goodness sake, I don't want to do this. There's got to be like a third option where it's sort of, um, well... At least let me try to talk to him, because I have a probably have a little bit more sway. I really don't want to do this. We can't save. So it is going against the magistrate and whom I like, incidentally current magistrate, and then trying to elect the other one who is equally, or is more, Mal what was his name, Maliolus? Or just breaking him out, and breaking him out would upset the golden rule. So... What about the rules? I don't want everyone to get in trouble because I was bad. Oh, for... No, 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 no. Don't have a choice. I hate this, where you just don't have a choice and there's got to be like a third option where it's just, you know, kind of... Let me think about this. Or let me come back to you on that, but... Foiled for choice, you're not. No. Galerius? He's nice. I like Galerius. He made me a doll and everything. If you help make him magistrate, he can get me out of here and I can give you the key to my treasure. Hannibal said it was in the systems. I can't remember what it was, just that it was way up high and very precious.
Well, at least you're not voting for a bad one. I mean, Galerius seems like a good guy, so I'll see what I can do. Get Dooley's key to the upper system by releasing him from prison. Now, that, I can guarantee you, is going to break the golden rule somehow. So, do you know of a way out of here? Really? Well, yeah, yeah. That's not what I said. I asked if you know of a way out of here. Please, I hate it here. It makes me very sad. I really do feel sorry for him. So what do you think about the golden rule? Oh, you think treasure? Oh dear. Let's talk about your what treasure. Used to look up. He said... He gave it all Okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to talk to this stranger here. Presumably, this is the priestess. Maybe? A new face. How vague and may best a watch over you. Yeah. I make with you. So what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? She's she's definitely she's definitely the priestess. Ave is just a general greeting. They say a sort of hello. Ave. Corvadas. Hi, where are you going? That kind of thing. So what's your story? Oh my! I take it people are quite direct where you're from. <laughs> I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a vestal priest and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? <laughs> yeah, I know. Ave, my name is Wolfie. Sorry, what should I have done? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and <laughs> ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. <laughs> yeah. So how did you end up here? You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? The voice acting is really, really good. I, I must admit, I'm quite impressed with this. Did a good job on this one. A young woman named Karen dragged me out of the river unconscious and sent me in here. Specifically to find a person named Al who ends up being subject to the golden rule, and what else do you need to know? Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed... odd to you. It carries negative connotations where I'm from. No, I'm not going to do that. We, we, I, I am not going to touch upon that one. I think I see where this is going. No. We'll stick with the... Uh, a little bit more of the truth. It's an older name, but not uncommon where I'm. Older? I see. Hmm. I wonder if... No. Okay, what were you going to say? I apologise. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember, and see if you notice any patterns. All right. Good. Thank you. But please, be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you, too. 
Oh, what happened to Livia? Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive we read her note. of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. And then, about a month ago, she suddenly changed. She withdrew, stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help. But she just looked at us with this haunted stare, called us bloodless shadows and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the golden rule was too much for her. But there is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? Okay, so, yeah, there's... She thought the same, then there's there's got to be some kind of pattern there, and uh, there's definitely a pattern there for how people ended up here and why. But Livia, I would presume, would be the old woman we had passed on the way to the city with Galerius. Okay, I will be careful. Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth and come back to me if you discover any patterns. Okay, so this will prioritize the quest, showing its objective markers only. Okay, so let's see what I can do. Um, might as well just continue talking to her. But I do want to continue with one quest before leaving the live stream anyway. You know the way out of here. I don't, I'm afraid. It seems to me we're exiled here until the gods judge us, one way or another. What do you think about the Golden Rule? I'm quite sure it's the work of the gods, which is strange because they've never been particularly concerned with our misdeeds, as long as we've kept the peace of the gods. We asked for blessings, for good health, bountiful harvest, military victory, and in return, we offer praise, wine, incense, or animals. But here, it seems they require much more of us. I find myself reminded of an especially pertinent tale from our great poet Ovid in his epic Metamorphoses. Oh. Would you like to hear it? It is rather long. Okay, so... I guess so. We might as well have the... While we're here, we might as well have the long version. Wonderful. It goes like this. Horses and Philemon were an old married couple living a humble life in a small town. One night, the town gets a visit from a couple of vagrants. They go from door to door, asking for a place to stay the night. Of course, being vagrants, they're turned away sharply from house after house, a thousand in all, until finally they come to the little cottage where Borsis and Philemon live. Now the kind old couple had very little to offer, but nevertheless, they invite these strangers into their house and offer them food, wine, and a place to stay. Immediately the guests make themselves at home. They begin gulping down the old couple's wine, so much so that Borsis, the old lady, begins to worry they're going to run out. And then she notices something strange. Her wine pitcher keeps refilling itself, as if by magic, realizing only a select few possess such powers. Says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine, and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Then Jupiter says to them, You have passed our test, but everyone else in this city failed. So we are going to destroy this place and everyone in it, except you, who we will grant a wish. So old Borsis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish. 
which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. I'm inclined to agree, because in this world, you know, the world that we live in, where there's very little compassion, very little love, very little of anything, you know, despite the fact that I personally don't like people, if someone is in need, if someone knocked on my door and said, hey, I am really desperate for food, I'm not going to turn them away. I would absolutely give them some food. Even if it's just like a little scrap to tide them over. Or if I can give money for something, then I will. And I think that this is... I mean, I, I did read this. But I think, I think it is. It's definitely, you know, because... As she said, she likes to think it's a way of showing compassion for those less fortunate themselves. Sometimes the people who are less fortunate who find themselves on the street have a very good reason for it. Sometimes they don't. But if you help them out regardless, then it makes you a better person than the people who may have necessarily put them there. I'm pleased to hear it. So what's the status of the election? It Who's must winning? be completed by dusk just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Maliolus, the challenger. Why do you ask? Oh, God. Oh, I'd like to nominate. Um, who's allowed to vote? All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend, unless they're running, of course. Women can't vote? Mm. That's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. It never sat right with me, either. There are some women who can vote, vestal priestesses like myself. But in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent. But if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. Such as? By using whatever gifts the gods gave you. Nothing untoward, of course. Hmm. Hmm. This option is, is becoming more tempting. So what's your role in the election? I'm responsible for announcing <laughs> it and making sure the procedures are followed. Can I nominate another candidate? You can, assuming they're eligible and willing to accept the nomination. Hmm. Well, I'd like to uh, nominate Galerius. I like the idea, but I know Galerius well, and his position has always been that he won't run unless Maliolus withdraws. It was only yesterday that he said to me he'd only ever run if it was absolutely necessary to make sure Sentius wasn't re-elected. So... I suppose if you'd like to see Galerius elected magistrate, you'd need to persuade Maliolus to withdraw somehow. Hmm. You know how tempting that is? Okay, let's talk <laughs> about something else. I've... I'm Come not going to do that. Me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbours. Okay, let's, let's see. So... This particular one, the I think we should track this one. Um, where's the inventory? No denials.
his punishing act. No more preamble. Let's get this one. Already been in here. go back to the palace I guess oh Help. you have to do something a man arrived in the baths a real nasty sort with his face all covered up and he's got a weapon oh you have to do something or he's gonna break the golden rule oh wait who are you but now's not the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you going to help or not? I'll get right on Thank it. Thank you. He's still in there somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. No? Did you hear that? Hear what? We heard a voice whisper. No. What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. Never mind. I, I I don't know why I said that. <gasps> okay. Whoa. It's a shrine. It's collapsing. Oh. What? What? Warning. Beware, the shrine may collapse at any moment. Fabia, no! Oh god, she's dead! Did anyone see that? The whole shrine just collapsed on her! Oh Fabia, why did you have to go in there? Poor sweet girl! Whoa! What? I can't believe she's dead. Fabia, I mean. She walked into that empty shrine, and the next moment she is lying dead under a pile of rubble. The gods are cruel and unjust. She was like a daughter to me. I'm sorry, friends. It's not right for me to lay my burden upon him. It is so... Uh, wow. What? So she obviously didn't read the note. That that's um. Oh my God! No. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I don't know a Quinctius. I'm not sure I believe that. So allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quintius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Got it. Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? Okay, uh, why don't you put that bow down and you can come in and see for yourself. Yeah. Or we're just a small group of strangers who wound up here by accident. I don't know which one shall I choose? Damn it. Oh, how very welcoming of you. You want me to let my guard down, is that it? You're not going to get your claws into me. I was told Quintius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Wait, what's this mystery cult? Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't, I don't know anything. Worshipping Bacchus Magna Mater or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. 
Always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quinctius did, those days are numbered. Yeah, well, he's going after cultists, but he's a f clearly a fanatic, so there's really no difference. We're not cultists. You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? Uh, we're all trapped here. So you admit you're not allowed to leave. Threatening me is not going to help you, but in any case, that sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra, you all believe? You know, in you know, the case of a fanatic, the fanatic mentality is that no matter what you say, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference because their mind's already made up. And within the parameters of that fanaticism, they're going to believe their truth and not be open to others' truths at all. It's a warning. Uh, a distinction without a difference. Told ya. You. You've clearly been indoctrinated into this nonsense. Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? They were once people who were turned to gold as punishment, and you're not going to believe me anyway. You lot are practicing human sacrifice. Yeah. You people disgust me. You're distorting what I said. Yes, yes. Because I'm the real villain here. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. There's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such a zeal. Speak for they yourself. They just see what they become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. I have no idea who or where he is. What can you tell me about him? Very well. Here's what I know. He's a 40 to 50 year old man with distinctive eyes, one green and one blue. He's also known to have delusions of grandeur. The Emperor says he and his cult, your cult, are responsible for starting the fire which burnt half of Rome to the ground and killed thousands in the process. Yeah, <clears throat> while it may be true, Emperor Nero was not exactly a um, sane emperor. Well, how do you know that he set fire to All Rome? I know, all I care about, is that the emperor believes he is guilty and wants him dead. The details are not my concern. This is your last chance. Are you going to tell me where he is or not? Well... Given that, um, given that the fires started were probably because it's thought that the fires started to burn half the room were because people were kind of rebelling against Nero and his tyrannical rule, it sort of is easy to sort of, you know, put the scapegoat on others. So I have no idea who or where he is because I have not met a quick Dilius. <sighs> then you're of no use to me. Well, Do you have any last words? Yeah. <laughs> you can swear at him. Said you wouldn't kill me if I told you the truth. If you fire that arrow here, everyone is going to die. Yeah, well, go on. I'd say that's rather convenient, since I was planning to kill you all anyway. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. <laughs> Way run, but at least he got his just deserves. Oh, hey, run. 
we have to go back in time. Ooh. So they coming after me. Oh yeah, there he is. You can see him down there. Magistrate senses. No items. Okay, wait. And that's it. And the first, first example of the first chance. of uh, going back in time and then readdressing that. So at this point, I am going to end the stream because it's been for two hours, a bit longer than I had thought, but I will continue this probably next Monday. Since, uh, you know, we didn't get to man, it didn't get to finish this particular part of it, but the plot twists and the intrigues and all of this i'm really getting into this game and um it's actually got farther than i did for the original mod i mean i i'm not sure if this particular part was it but i literally just sort of got into the city and started exploring around with the mod before it, it crashed and so this i'm so glad that this is a <coughs> um now, I'm, I'm so glad that this is a standalone game now. So anyway, thank you for popping in. And I'll just end it here. That's it for now. See you in Discord. Till the next time.